Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be back to the virtual classroom to be able to share my cannabis experience with everyone out there that's curious to learn about why is cannabis really medicine. My name is Dr. Shonda Macias, and I am the CEO of Alara Holistic. And um, I'm just very happy to be able to share information about about the cannabis world, whether it is educating patients or physicians or just the community in general so that we just dismiss all the myths about cannabis, but also educate so people can make informed decisions on what is best ways to treat their ailment and their condition. So I'll give a couple of minutes before we actually start but I'll start to just talk a little bit about our talk today. I know that when I go into the cannabis world every day um, and I'm driven by my passion to be here, um, what really propels me is that I've seen how cannabis has changed the lives of thousands of patients and it is a true healthcare benefit. But unfortunately, a lot of people who are in need of help of true health care um, don't know what cannabis looks like um, today in 2021, which is truly it's reflected as a medicine. Now, there are beliefs that cannabis is still used in the sense for recreational use, but really cannabis is used for all kinds of undiagnosed conditions and people who use it and continue to use it um, are using it because they feel better when they do that. So the question that I ask a lot of patients is that what do you feel better from? Whether it's your mood or your mental health or is it that you feel better physically? Is it a physical ailment or a condition that we're helping to ameliorate when you think about cannabis usage. So these are the things that people need guidance and help with. And that's why we're here to talk about the different products today that cannabis um, is offered in that are true medicines. So with that, I am going to jump into it. I hope everyone can continue to join me in this live stream and um, just to understand what are flowers to start off with. So when I refer to flowers, um, I really refer to the bud of the cannabis plant. If you look at the images that we have before us, what you'll notice on these different buds are the hair-like symbols on them, which are actually trichomes. And that is where our cannabinoids are housed. Um, a majority of them are um, range from THC, which most people are um, familiar with, or CBD. But there's over 140 cannabinoids that help your system to regain balance and to provide an improved quality of health. And people ask, well, okay, how do you use flour? Well, most people do know how. Most people actually grind it off of the stem and they use it to smoke it. So to smoke it, whether it's in a pipe or if you use it in rolling papers is one way to use cannabis. Um, some patients actually take it, they grind it, and they put it in a vaporizer. Now, the reason why you would use a vaporizer is that you want to be more intent on the longevity of using cannabis as medicine in that device versus burning it off. So smoking is smoking. So if you have lung issues, um, whatever that healthcare underlying issues you have, it might not be the best way where vaporizing is just taking in the vapor itself of the flour, which means I take the flour and I grind it and then I put it inside a vaporizer, something very similar to an inhaler 
and just pull from it. And that way it actually burns more efficiently the medicine. And also you can adjust temperature settings on your vaporizer so that you can target essential acids um, or essential oils that help in your recovery. So for example, um, limonene is vaporizable. I believe that is at a 311 degrees. So therefore you set your temperature so that you can really feel the impacts of the limonene in your medicinal use. What does limonene do? Well, everyone knows I refer to that terpene um, or essential oil all the time because it's a natural antidepressant and a diuretic. So it helps my body release of natural water weight, as well as giving me a lift in my mood with the little string of energy with it. So again, the vaporizer or using flour to either smoke or vaporizing is how people use the flour itself. Um, I know that can be a little bit more um, in depth and it really starts to go into the different strain selections that you would make. But to give you just an idea of the product itself, um, if I think about the whole market of cannabis, over 50% of the market demands flour. Now, people say, well, why flour? And because it's so many strains. And for me as a healthcare provider, I feel that having the resources or a library of strains or of medicine can help me tackle different healthcare issues and um, deliver the benefits based upon the specific element you're dealing with. Where if I only had three strains, not all of them are gonna perform the same against different conditions like cancer or multiple sclerosis or even epilepsy. So for me, I need the library of medicine to be more targeted in our specific approach to individualize healthcare. And so that is the benefit of using the flower. But now we'll go on to another aspect. When I think about what it looks like with the flower, but still the natural approach to it, I think about Keith and Hash. So these are the images of Keith and Hash. And I know people are like, what is that? Never even heard of it. Or if you heard of it, you really don't know what it looks like. And simply if I took the flower itself and I shook it pretty rigorously like this, then the trichomes would fall off of it. And that's how we produce Keith. And then if we compact those trichomes, that gives us our hash. And that is the most easiest way to explain those concepts. Now, most patients will say, well, why do I wanna use keep or hash? Well, when you have a different type of pain, which is different levels of pain management, you might need more concentrated trichomes, which has the different cannabinoids or THC or CBD within them to help with your healthcare condition. And so therefore you can add those to your regimen. So if you're smoking, that's where you saw um, a pre-roll um, flower, which had additional keep on top of it to help with pain management. But also you can use the keep and the hash in producing different edible forms, which we'll talk about shortly, but it's really used for a concentrated amount of medicine because everyone's dosing is different and everyone's condition might be different from another. And even the profile of your condition might be more exacerbated. Let me explain what that means. If you're stage one cancer and stage four, you might need a more concentrated product to help you with nausea um, and help you with pain relief. 
all those things would depend on your specific ailment, the stage of your ailment, and then what medicine we can use to dose you properly to alleviate all of your symptoms or some of your symptoms. So again, that's why we have more concentrated products because as you know, with cannabis being an illegal federally substance currently, the research and the optimization of using cannabis of medicine has resulted in us really trying to find the best mechanisms to treat patients with natural medicines that really help them. And so we use Keith and Hash for those reasons to give you more concentrated relief. Um, but let's go on to a couple of more different type of products. I know that um, I'm getting a little feedback and people are just saying thanks for the basic clarity of what this looks like because it's not rocket scientists, you know, science right now. This is just basic education so the patients can decide if this is a healthcare benefit that they choose to ensue. So let's go to the next one, which is rosin and extracts. Again, I don't want you to look at this and say, well, what is going on here? How did he make this medicine? This looks intimidating to me. I'm scared to use it. And really, if we go back to the phenomenon of the flower itself, and if you take that flower and you put it in a George Foreman griller and you press down on it, all those trichomes are going to melt out. Now, there's different ways to extract the um, trichomes from the flower itself, but once you push down it and come and collect the sap that you see here, these are the concentrated products, rosin and other different type of extracts. They're really just byproducts, again, from the trichomes itself. And they're in this form because some patients choose to use the concentrated form based upon, again, their ailment or their condition. And this is where they seek the most relief for their condition. Now, what we have seen, which is very interesting, is that a lot of markets now have the rosin or extracts inside of a capsule. So you can use it in the pill form and still have all the benefits of cannabis, but it's literally in a capsule. And then if you think about also the opposite end, which is suppositories, they're delivered the same way. And patients use this as a wonderful choice when you deal with phantom pain that just you can't get past. And so a lot of patients use extracts that are in different mechanisms um, of transmission or trans um, or really just consumption so that they can reap the benefits and not necessarily have to use the extract in the pure form. But this is the same where we see again, how we take the, the medicine, transform it, and we use it in different products. So I want to talk about vaporizers and topicals now. I'm going to, again, demystify the whole topic surrounding these products. And simply, that oil we saw in the previous, the extracts, or what we saw with our rosin, if we put it in the liquid form, diluted out, we can actually put it in the vaporizer. That vaporizer works just like an inhaler. Um, it's in the shape of most of them, a pen form, where you just pull on it immediately. Now, patients said, well, why would I use an inhaler over smoking or some of the other mechanisms? Well, inhalers or what we call our vape pens or oil cartridges allow for the immediate relief of a symptom for example, a seizure, or you'll see a, a muscle cramp, 
or any type of involuntary spasm within 30 seconds to two minutes after inhaling um, cannabis through a oil cartridge, you typically see the release of those muscles and the patient has that immediate release. That's the, came, the same with seizures as well. So again, these are just true mechanisms that patients can use a part of their toolkit for wellness and healthiness. Um, now, let's go with topicals. Topicals are pretty easy. You take the medicine, you put it in a lotion or a salve base, and you apply it directly on the skin. This is just a more localized effect. It's not taken in systemically, but it's put on so it addresses a specific area and a specific condition. So patients use topicals, everything from joint pain to eczema to psoriasis. Um, we have seen it in muscle spasms. So again, the right topical depends on the ailment or condition that you're really trying to um, find relief from. And these are the basic um, tools that again, a patient uses. Now, there are two more products which are typical to any cannabis marketplace, um, which includes the edibles and also the tinctures. Now, I put both of these in the same category because they're both taken in orally and it takes some um, about 45 minutes, sometimes up to two hours to really take an, um, have an effect on a patient. And these also though provide the longest duration for, re, um, for coverage for ailment and condition. So for example, an edible can last up to six to eight hours. And so patients really like the fact that if they ingest it and you um, have a condition that really needs six to eight hours of relief, like systemic pain um, or other conditions like even epilepsy where you want to make sure you're covered over a certain period and a seizure won't onset, then these are the options that are available to you. So with that, having a edible, which is truly the strongest way to consume cannabis, I ask my patients to be very careful when they dose. And I say patients, but really the patients that treat, choose to treat themselves with um, cannabis, um, to really be careful about their dosing around edibles to make sure you're taking a lot of water during that period. Start off slow, go a little bit higher until you reach the optimal dosing for yourself. And with that, I can also talk about how it looks like for an oil tincture. Now, oil tinctures are have the same lasting effect, but there's different compositions with them just like with edibles and you drop the oil simply right underneath your tongue and you try to hold it there as long as you can or you swallow it down. Under the tongue gives more of a, a quicker impact on your system where if you actually swallow it down, it goes more to that 45 to two hour range. But um, what really the tinctures that have been developed in recent years have different essential oils or terpenes that can help different conditions and different ailments. So for patients with autism, I would definitely recommend specific terpene compositions and formulas to help with that. And that ranges amongst Parkinson's and other ALS, um, other different ailments and conditions. Now, they all work differently all formulas work differently. So finding the right formula with you is something that we really encourage you working with your physician. Um, but here, um, and I'm always available to help answer any questions that people have regarding medicine to steer them in the right directions of 
what really would help you with your health care needs. So I really appreciate the platform today. Um, I hope that this has been informative. And um, if there's any ways that I can, um, you know, help anyone, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on the Dr. Shonda website. And I'm going to just answer a couple of questions that I see in the chat room right now. Um, one of the questions is, how is vaporizers for people with asthma? Well, there are bronchial dilators. They actually open it up your chest um, and patients use it for that reason. And so that's one conception versus I will always tell a patient I prefer a vaporizer because of the benefits and what I've seen versus smoking. Um, but I know patients do um, feel that sometimes smoking is a better delivery method. Um, but again, patients have the ability to choose the best mechanism for pain relief or a leave of their different symptoms on their own. And so one of the other questions that have also popped up is that, can I address cannabis as a sleep aid? Oh yeah, I definitely can. We have a lot of patients that use cannabis to help them sleep um, for their insomnia. Now the strains that if you go to the categories of picking strains, even though it's somewhat obsolete today, it would be an indica. Um, an indica, people refer to it um, in the couch strain, but really I would steer it more so to the composition of the terpenes present along with the cannabinoids. So I said earlier that there are over 140 cannabinoids that are in the cannabis plant. Some we understand that how they actually work and some of them we don't. We're still doing a lot of research, but there's one which is called CBN. CBN is a natural sedative. And so if you take that natural sedative effect of a CBN, which is a characteristic of a lot of different strains, and you pair that with terpenes that also cause a sedative effect like linalol. Linalol is the terpene that is present in lavender. So when you burn a lavender candle or you put lavender lotion on or you add it to your bath water and it's that relaxing feeling, this is the same element that's in cannabis. And you just use it and it gives you that same relaxation effect. So those are the two elements I would say is key when deciding on using cannabis as a sedative to help with insomnia. Um, also, um, we have a patient that has asked about neuropathic pain. That pain is really, um, it's hard with patients because it is something that really impairs not only their physical body, but also the symptom of it starts to impact their mental. Let me explain what that means. So when you have pain in your body, naturally you almost go into a depressive like state. And so mentally you also start to like fall in a slump because you're in pain physically and then mentally you're not able to do the things that you once did because you are in pain. So it does have that psychological impact on you as well. So for something like pain management, I would not go straight indica or I would not go sativa. I would do a hybrid and a hybrid strain with a higher THC um, content, but also a high CBD content. Now, the THC will definitely numb the pain, but what is so interesting when you use a hybrid is that you get the impacts of the, the mental state to lift up. And having the right terpenes in that strain, in the sativa composition, really gives you the high energy and the happiness that sometimes is hard to achieve during a pain-like episode. But then it has a high THC content, 
which actually neutralizes the effect of pain. So you have bad belief and then you're happy. Now, the reason why I said it's important to have a high CBD content with it is because I always think it's important to deal with the underlying condition. And that's really when you think about the neuroprotecting nature of CBD. It really starts to tackle the underlying condition that is causing the pain. So now you get relief. You start working at the core issue of the pain, and then you have the lift to keep you happy. And so that's where cannabis really comes in this multi-dynamic um, benefit to patients. And that's why you see the constant demand for cannabis in states, in policy, and in healthcare. So these were the things that we really try to educate people on. And if there's more questions, please don't hesitate to send them. And if I don't answer everything today, just know you can reach me on the Dr. Shonda website with your questions, and I'll do my best to answer everything to give you the true healthcare um, answers that I've encountered in my career and experiences working with thousands of patients in um, that choose cannabis as medicine.